Welcome to McKean's Hockey on YouTube. On today's video, Ethan E2 is going to do a scouting report on Zeev Booyam. And if you want to read the article, head over to McKean'sHockey.com. Ethan has written a great article, and it even includes video clips from the season. And before you continue on to the video, please subscribe, hit that like button. We'd really appreciate it. All right, I'm passing it on to Ethan. Hi, my name is Ethan A2. I'm one of the U.S. scouts for McKean's Hockey, and today I'm going to be taking a look at University of Denver defenseman Zeev Bouillon. In traditional McKean's fashion, I'm going to be breaking it down based on certain traits that he displays, so his skating, his shot, his um, hockey IQ, his physicality and compete, and his skill level. First, let me introduce the player. So Zeev Bouillon, he spent last year with the U.S. National Team Development Program, and now he's playing in college hockey, and he's had an unbelievable freshman season at Denver. He's been incredibly productive, and I think he's impressed even the most optimistic observers. There are people who thought he could step in and hold his own, but he's done more than just hold his own. He's excelled and been one of the top five defensemen in all of college hockey in his first season there. At the time of this recording, he's competing for the national championship in the Frozen Four with Denver, and if he wins it, he could cap off a season where he'll have vaulted himself near the top of most NHL draft boards. But looking at his game more specifically, the thing that stands out most about Zeev is his intelligence. He is an unbelievably smart defender, and his reads really guide everything that he does. He doesn't have maybe the most premium athletic tools. He's a good skater, especially on his edge work, but he's not the fastest. And he's definitely improving defensively, but he's not going to beat anyone up. But the thing that really makes him stand out is just how smart he is. When he's on the ice, he picks out plays that you as a, as a scout or as a fan may not have even realize could be possible. And so that's the thing that's most consistently impressive is while he shows up a lot on the score sheet and he really has impressive box score numbers, he's so much more than just the box score. He finds a way to make an impact on every shift and in really projectable, intelligent ways. And so we're going to take a look into each category of his of his um, skill set and give it a grade at the end of each section. So the first section we're going to look at is uh, Z Booyam's skating, and it's something of a debate, I think, among scouts, uh, his skating, because there are some people that point to his la lack of maybe a burning straight line speed and say, well, that's that's going to hurt him at the at the next level. And it's true. He would definitely stand to improve his um straight line speed he could definitely be more of a burner but really his game is much more about his lateral movement and his edge work and that's where he truly excels so now we're going to take a look at this first clip from Booyam, which is from the um gold medal game at the recent world junior championships and here we see how he basically uses his edge work to maintain separation from the four checker and then fire a pass into the offensive zone. And you see here, he's not trying to just blow his way through the through the neutral zone and go as fast as possible. He's really carving his way through defensive coverage and, and utilizing that edge work that I talked about. And so that clip is a really good illustration of where he sort of separates with his, with his skating ability. In this clip from his time playing in college, we can see some of his positives and negatives in terms of his skating. He does a really good job waiting until the best possible moment to start his acceleration and uh, move into sort of a breakout. But he also shows the limitations here of his straight line speed. He's just not creating. He's got, he doesn't have the most efficient strides. So he's just not creating nearly as much straight line separation as other defensemen in his sort of more offensive mold can. And against higher level competition where everyone's a little bit faster, a little bit stronger. There's the question of, is he really going to be able to create as much space as he's been doing against his peers? And that's a fair question. I'm a big fan of Booyam, but I, I, I do hesitate and say, well, are some of the moves that he's doing now going to be possible when everyone else is, is faster? And this clip sort of illustrates how he stand, he could stand to improve his, his straight line ability. But, in this next clip, we see how his lateral mobility and his overall skating ability can be an asset, not just on offense, but on defense. Here, he's playing aggressively on a puck carrier and allowing himself to essentially directly staple himself to the forward and battle for that puck and get the puck out of the zone. And that's something that is extremely valuable at the NHL level because you don't want to spend time at all pinned in your defensive zone. So right now I'm assigning him a grade of 55 for his skating ability. I certainly think that there's room to grow, but as of right now, it's a pretty clean, simply above average projection, um, nothing more. So the next tool we're going to look at is his shot. 
And I think that Z presents a pretty interesting question with his shot because as a scout, you wonder, okay, what's more important when we're evaluating someone's shooting tool? Is it what happens before the shot is even taken or what happens during the actual shooting action? Which one is more relevant? Booyam specifically, what he does before he shoots the puck is exemplary. It's about how he puts himself in the right position to challenge a goalie and how he picks his lanes and chooses to attack from up top at the top of the offensive zone that really sets him apart. And I think part of that is definitely his hockey IQ, which we'll get to later. But a big part of that is also just his instincts as a shooter. He's not a standout goal scorer by any means like Kari Akimchuk is in the WHL, another top defenseman in this class. But he can certainly make the most of the opportunities he's given um, and he can contribute a goal here or there. So in this first clip, it's also from the gold medal game against Sweden. And we see a good shot. We see sort of a, a very good angle of William's slap shot. It's a very professional shot. It's not an absolute rocket, but he positions himself well and picks his spot pretty elegantly. And it's sort of showing that he doesn't need to have the most amazing shot, but he knows how to get it done. But it's not really a standout tool. And now in the second clip, we get to see William's intelligence as a shooter and in sort of where he stands out from a goal scoring perspective. Um, this is a situation that comes up very often on the power play pucks at the top of the zone with a quarterbacking blue liner looking to find a way to get the puck through traffic to create a scoring chance. And William's shot here isn't necessarily him trying to pick a corner past the goalie and score it himself. It's really a targeted volley, specifically trying to get a tip from one of the two defenders in the uh, in the slot area. It's not a goal necessarily. Obviously, this puck doesn't score, but it's easy to imagine that net front forwards at a higher level sort of really feasting on these kinds of shots that are very well placed through traffic um, for a position to be tipped. So in this next clip, also from the World Juniors, um, we get to see where he truly stands out. And, and one of his fav one of Zeev's uh, favorite ways to be threatening as a goal scorer, rather than just a player who sets up his teammates, is by attacking high danger areas of the ice. His ability to navigate traffic on the way to the slot is extremely impressive. And it's something that's going to be relevant in the discussion of his other tools. But in terms of his shooting, um, he's able to get into high quality scoring areas that other defensemen just really can't. And, and, and that's a a really important thing if he's going to be scoring goals at the next level. So we see here against Finland, he receives the puck. He sort of works his way past the defender with a clever move um, with his stick. And then he gets a shot off. Then it doesn't score, but it's a prime slot shot opportunity that, you know, if he takes that 10 times, he's probably going to score a decent number of them. So right now I'm going to give this a 50 grade, which represents NHL average. I think that there is room to grow, but I don't think that being a premier goal scorer is going to be a hallmark of his game at the next level. The next area, the next tool that we're going to look at is his skill level. And while I think that his hockey IQ is his standout tool, his skills are certainly a close second. His soft skill with puck on a stick consistently left me blown away. And it's not just how he dekes and puts himself onto highlight reels, but it's about how his skill shines through during the minute-to-minute -minute moments that truly defines what a consistently impactful defenseman is. It's not just him deking through someone else to get a highlight reel goal. It's about how he uses small area skills to get a zone exit, because those are the things that happens 95% of the time he's on the ice, and, and those are the things that are most relevant to how he's delivering minute-to-minute -minute value. So diving into the tape now. So in this first clip, we see a really just a clean, great stretch pass. And you see he's got his head on a swivel, reading the ice as he's retrieving the puck in the defensive zone. And by the time he turns to really make the decision of what he wants to do with the puck, he's got a mental map of, of everyone around him. And so he's able to identify the exact right recipient of that pass and allow his team to transition into creating offense on the rush. And another defenseman may have, you know, needed to wait or, or maybe not have identified the, the exact read as quickly. And as a result, could have had an extended stay in the defensive zone. But Zeeb is really proactive in how he's reading the ice. And as a result, he's able to make the most of his really, really, really high-end passing skill. I mean, that's a really perfect pass onto the stick of a teammate. And when you combine the skill level with IQ, which we'll get to later, you really have a high upside defenseman here. In the last clip, we saw how Zeeb's long range passing proficiency is an asset on defense. And now in this clip, we see how it helps him on offense. It's a pass directly through traffic onto the tape of Will Smith, resulting in a goal. And obviously, Will Smith is not covered by Switzerland's penalty killing structure here, but it's nonetheless a pretty difficult pass for Booyam to make. And it really shows how he's able to fire really crisp, accurate passes from a high variety of situations onto the tape of um, 
his teammates. And I think that it bodes well for his future as a potential power play quarterback. He's got all the skill in the world to play that role at the next level, and he's already been doing it excellently against his peers. In this next clip, we can see uh, how William's skill interacts with um, pressure. And it's a relatively common challenge that defensemen wrestle with, especially high, at higher levels. The puck comes to him along the wall, and his passing options are clouded by the pressure in his face from two four checkers. But unfazed by Noah Oslin charging straight at him, he flips the puck to, part to his partner, Sam Rinzel, who, under less pressure, is able to lead the Americans out of a potentially dangerous situation in the defensive zone. So I'm looking at Bouillam's skill level and how I'm going to grade that. I think that it very clearly grades as well above average. And for me, that's a grade of 60. I don't think it's maybe going to be the most elite, like in the Kale McCars of the world, but how many defensemen really are in that conversation? I don't think that's a fair comparison at all for William. I think within the scope of this draft class, he is among the best puck skills of any defender. And I think that that's plainly obvious just looking at his tape from this season at Denver and from his time at the national team development program. He's a standout defenseman in terms of skill level. And I think that that's going to be a building block for him going forward as he advances, you know, a little further into college hockey and then eventually moves to the pro game. So, this next trait is what I think is the standout tool in his toolbox, and that's William Smarts, his hockey IQ, his intelligence. His ability to read the ice uh, and sort of make the best play is the bedrock of everything he does. He's a skilled player. He skates pretty well and his shot is fine, but his hockey IQ is what truly separates him from the pack. He's confident making decisive decisions with and without the puck to, ma to manipulate opposing players and elevate the opportunities of his teammates. He's creative, finding thoughtful, often out-of-the-box ways to leverage his tools to meaningfully impact the action on the ice in a way that advances his team's objectives. His ability to process information on the ice at high speeds is also remarkable. Despite dealing with a game that moves at a really high pace in front of him, he's able to very quickly calculate the best possible actions to take and execute them. So here, here are some clips that I'm going to show you just that really make it evident how much of a standout tool Williams' intelligence is. It's sort of a brief collection of plays, and I don't think it's going to do absolute justice to his exemplary hockey IQ, but it's just going to be a short showcase of how intelligent he is on a shift-by-shift -shift basis. So the creativity that he, in this first clip, we see that his creativity doesn't just happen on the offensive side of the, play, uh, of the game. It also extends to the defensive zone. And uh, against Air Force here, he receives the puck under pressure, and he's got a, he's got a four-checker, pretty much on him the moment he receives the puck in the corner. And he knows that. He's always reading as he always has a map of what's going on. So he knows he's going to be under pressure immediately. And the play that he makes here is, is simply stunning. He pretty much jumps a little bit into the air and fires a pass between his legs up the boards to two teammates for a clean zone exit. In this next clip, uh, we see him do that again. And, 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 and that's a really important thing because... There are lots of times where a player may think of something and it just becomes a one-off, but Babuyam has shown an ability to when he just finds a creative thing to do that works, he adds that to his arsenal. It becomes part of his toolbox to employ again and again. And so in this clip, this is also from the gold medal against Sweden, which is one of the better games he's played. And this sort of shows his confidence and how that confidence ties into his intelligence. This could certainly be a set play on a face-off, but it's nonetheless an impressive moment. He receives a pass and then baits the player covering him into thinking he's about to carry it into the other side of the offensive zone, as he often does. But instead, he leaves the puck behind him to Will Smith, who gets a really nice look on the net as a result. And it's just a, a sort of showcase of he's just trying to be deceptive and let his teammates, who are also highly skilled, make the most of their skills. He's not a selfish player. He truly is an elevator of everyone else on the ice, and, and that's an example of, of his intelligence and how it helps him do that. So looking at the overall picture of William's IQ, I'm going to assign it a high grade of a 65, and, and that's because I truly believe that it is a standout tool among this entire draft class. He is, in my opinion, one of the smartest players in this whole class, not just among defensemen. The plays that he's able to make under pressure in high leverage situations are just so creative and so impressive. So the last section of his overall uh, set of tools that we're going to be grading is his physicality slash compete level. So in this first clip, which is from the gold medal game, it's very short and we just see him despite stumbling down sort of on the penalty kill, he's able to not give up on a play and interrupt a potential dangerous scoring opportunity from a, from a Swedish forward who's about to enter the slot. He is sort of stumbling and he's falling down. 
And there's a lot of defensemen who, in that position, just weren't really able to do much of it because you've been dealt a bad hand. But Bouillon has the kind of work rate and work ethic to, regardless of the hand he's been given in any moment-to-moment play, he's going to give it his all and try and make something happen. And so in a really important gate part of the game, which is tied 10 minutes into the game on the penalty kill, he makes an important defensive stop. Um, and, and so that speaks to his work ethic and compete level. He does not give up on plays regardless of how bad it looks like. So in this next clip from the same game, um, we see his willingness to endure physical pain for the benefit of his team. He eagerly folds into a shot blocking position here and blocks a shot directly leading to a zone exit. He's maybe not going to be Chris Russell at the next level and blocking a ton of shots, but it's something that he's very, very, very willing and, and eager to do. And it's a part of his game that allows him to be a trustworthy player defensively. I, th- I don't think that David Carl would trust him the way he does on the penalty kill, for example, if he wasn't willing to take some punishment here or there. And this is a, a clip that shows that he's most definitely willing to do so. He's certainly not a player that's going to shy away from being physical. It's not one of the building blocks of his game, but it's certainly a part of his game. And I think that translates to a, an NHL average projection, which is a, ga- a grade of 50. I think that he competes hard and he can certainly battle when he needs to but it's not going to be one of the areas where he separates himself far from it. And so a grade of 50 is where I would feel comfortable assigning him. So taking an overall look and sort of wrapping things up with Booyam, I think that this is one of the most talented players in the entire draft class. Uh, in my in my personal rankings for the U.S. region, I've ranked him second, just behind presumptive first overall pick Macklin Celebrini, ahead of a whole host of really talented players like Michigan State defenseman Artem Levshinov. And I, obviously I think it's close, but... I think that there's just a special quality, uh, maybe an X factor to Williams' game, um, his intelligence combined with his skill level, that I just wouldn't want to pass on where I had a position to draft him. Um, And so I would advocate for him certainly in the top 10 of the draft. He is an unbelievably talented defenseman, and if you just turn on his tape, it'll be pretty easy to see why.